Hello and welcome to another video. In this one we are going to be talking about Git submodules, uh, <laughs> which are, uh, the TLDR is they are a way to have a Git repository inside of another Git repository. Um, they can often be useful if you're needing to include some other repository, uh, but you don't have like a proper package manager to do so. Uh, I found myself reaching for submodules in a couple of places, uh, particularly like building wrappers around C libraries, or um, <laughs> I, I used to use it for the Go vendoring experiment before Go changed how its packaging worked. Um, yeah, I've, I've done a few other cases like that. But let me show you how they work, uh, how to create a submodule, how to clone a repository that has a submodule, um, how to update a, a submodule, and how to delete a submodule. Uh, I'm actually going to show you this simple way of deleting a submodule, which requires a new enough version of Git. If you need, <laughs> if you need the instructions for older Git, uh, make sure to Google that and find this Tech Overflow article. Uh, but it's it's much easier now than it used to be. All right, so I'm just going to clone. Uh, well, actually, we'll just initialize a repository. Uh, empty git commit allow empty empty initial commit. Okay, so we're just gonna start with a repository that has nothing in it. Um, you can see ls is empty. And I'm going to add another repository to this repository. And the command that I'm gonna use for that is git submodule add, and then it takes a uh, URL and an optional path. <clears throat> We're just gonna use the URL, and it, it should infer, based on the last path segment, what the repository should be named, similar to git clone. Uh, so for that, I'm gonna do github.com slash Acetilly slash AST pretty. Uh, now note here, I did HTTPS for the cloning here. Uh, you will change what this is based on how your submodule is going to work. So like if it's a if it's entirely a private repository, you'll probably use an SSH URL here. Um, I'm using an HTTPS URL with the assumption that I would open source this repository. And uh, it, the only time this really matters is when uh, a machine is cloning your repository. You want to make sure that it's clonable. Um, so I usually I usually default to HTTPS here, but I don't know. It depends it depends on your your situation. Uh, but we run this, and submodule add is actually going to clone for us. You can see that it cloned into this location here. And if we run get status, you should see that it has added this special git modules file and this new file AST pretty. Now this seems a little bit strange if you haven't worked with you know symlinks or other things in git before uh, but the way git actually represents a submodule is a special little file here and a little bit of metadata here let's actually look at both of those uh, so first we're going to look at the git modules so you'll see here that it gives a name for our submodule so it says submodule ast pretty uh, says a path for it and a url that it cloned it from uh, but you'll notice here that there's no version associated with it and that's where this file uh, comes into play this ast pretty file and if we do git diff dash dash staged, uh, you'll see that it looks like a file here, uh, but it has a very, very special mode, this 16 or 160,000 mode. I guess it's not that because it's an octal, but uh, anyway, this mode tells git that this is not a real file, but this is a submodule instead. Um, and you'll see here that it has, you know, this contents here, sub project commit this, uh, and this is the version that we happen to clone that repository at. Uh, this also happens to be the latest version of that repository. Now, one of the downsides of submodules <laughs> is it's really hard to see from a diff whether you're increasing or decreasing the version uh, because they, they only version based on these, these Git hashes. And so it can be really tricky to manage submodules, especially at scale. Um, <laughs> one of the projects I actually worked on when I worked at Yelp was burning down the number of subprojects or the submodules in the uh, main repository. I think at one point there were like a hundred some odd submodules, like 120 or 130 submodules. Um, and this was before Yelp used PyPI to manage Python packages. So it was using submodules to kind of simulate a package manager. Uh, but burn that down, turn it in PyPI, and everyone was much happier that they didn't have to deal with submodules because they can be very, very confusing, especially for this reason. Uh, but also for merge conflicts. For merge conflicts, they're kind of a pain as well. Um, Okay, but yeah, once we've run git submodule add, we do need to make a commit so that this ends up in the repository. So we're going to do git commit dash m add submodule for ast pretty, um, and we're good to go. 
Um, now, when people clone this repository, well, well, I'll actually show you two different ways to clone this repository. Uh, but if we clone this repository, get clone empty to empty clone, uh, and we cd into empty clone, and we run get status, you'll see that get status is clean. We run ls, you'll see this folder here, uh, but the folder is empty. So by default, submodules are not cloned. Uh, which can be another kind of tricky thing about subbundles. Now you can force cloning submodules when you clone a repository by doing uh, dash dash recursive. So we're going to do empty clone two, and so this will clone the repository and then clone any submodules. So if we go to empty clone two, empty clone two, um, and we look at ASD pretty, you'll see that it has pulled in that other Git repository. So that's what the recursive flag does in Git clone. However, if you haven't done that, and actually this is this is a command that when I'm dealing with subbundles, I run this particular command a bunch of times. I don't know exactly, well, I know what it does. I don't know why it does that. Um, but this is the this is the kind of like, you know, if I'm if I don't know what I'm doing with submodules, I run this command essentially. And that's git submodule submodule update dash dash init. This seems to set submodules to the state of the repository. Uh, and I, I run this whenever I'm like confused about submodules. Uh, I also run this whenever I'm resolving a merge conflict inside of a repository with submodules, uh, because otherwise submodules can get into a really weird state during merge conflicts, and I don't quite understand what what is happening there. Uh, but this usually fixes it. My guess is that when submodules move forward and you conflict, that uh, Git doesn't update the state properly. And so this this is a command that I run very very often when dealing with submodules. Um, you can also pass recursive to this because it is possible that a submodule has a submodule. Um, in this case, you know, it, it doesn't, but you can, you can nest these as deep as you want. So the repository that you include might also have a repository that it includes. And so that's what this recursive flag does. I think there's also like depth settings to this as well. Um, but honestly, <laughs> if you're dealing with recursive submodules, you probably have bigger problems. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's, that's what this command is. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is changing the version of a particular submodule. And the way that I do this is I cd into that submodule, so cd into ASD pretty. Um, let's just say we wanted to go back in time and set the submodule at 1.5.0. You just run git checkout this inside of the submodule. This will change the version that it's pointing to. And now if we run git status out here, you'll see that uh, git status says that this is modified. It has new commits. This... Uh, <laughs> This, this bit here is a little misleading. Uh, we've actually gone back in time, so we actually have old commits, but, you know, git status doesn't know that. Um, but the way, you know, once we've done that git checkout, we can git add this. Uh, git add ASD pretty. And then if we look at git diff now, git diff staged, you'll see that it took, <laughs> and again, this is why versions, the versions are really hard to understand with submodules. We were at 9 AF, and now we're at 717. Who knows what that means? Um, and hopefully you have some other tool to visualize the difference here. Um, but yeah, then you would just do git commit dash m set asd pretty to v1.5.0, for instance. So that's how you can change a submodule. Uh, deleting a submodule is much easier in modern git, as I said before. You just do git rm and then the submodule path. Uh, and you don't have a training slash? Does the training slash break this still? No, they've they fixed that edge case too. There used to be an edge case where if you had the trailing slash, it would break in mysterious ways, but um, it looks like Git has made this way less painful. It used to be like a seven or eight step process to delete submodules, but now it's super easy. Uh, delete ASD pretty submodule. And you'll notice here that it also cleaned up the Git modules file for us as well. So now, now the submodule is completely gone and you can, you know, Move move along with your with your life. Uh, <laughs> oh man, the old process used to suck. So I'm I'm glad it's much nicer now. Um, is there anything else that I want to cover here? I think that covers most of the basics. Um, yeah. So you can you can kind of think of a submodule as like a pointer to another Git repository. Um, can be useful if you don't have a package manager to do whatever you need to do. Uh, oh, I guess I can show you one example of a repository that I have that has a submodule. Uh, github.com sass libsass python. So this is falling into the case that I was talking about earlier, where um, I have written a wrapper around a C library. And again, here's that command that we talked about before. Submodule update 
dash dash init. Um, and so you can see here, this is actually using the git protocol, which I should probably change because the git protocol is not secure. <laughs> um, yeah, it essentially is git over HTTP, but um, yeah, so I have a I have a sub project here that is libsass. This is the C++ library that is a, uh, you know, SAS compiler. And I am working on libsass Python, which is a Python wrapper around that library. Uh, and so as part of building the Python package, it builds this sub project and, or sorry, sub module. I said sub project, I meant sub module and uses that to distribute the, um, the Python library. Uh, but anyway, hopefully this was useful. If there are additional things you would like me to explain, leave a comment below or reach out to me on the various platforms. But thank you all for watching, and I will see you in the next one.